You may be debating between a few cities that you're thinking of moving to. Maybe you don't like your current living situation or you're looking for a new job. You're trying to figure out which city is right for you. And this video is to help you decide if the Phoenix area is the right spot for you. My name is Trevor Bragg. I'm here to give you everything you need to know about living in Phoenix. And I hope this video, by the end of it, I'm gonna give a very honest and clear review of if Phoenix is a good city or bad city for you to live in. Obviously I'm living here and I live here for a reason, so I do have some maybe bias towards why I think you should live here, but I'm also gonna tell you the things that I don't like about living here and be as honest as I can to help you make the right decision for living in Phoenix. I do have a free moving to Phoenix guide, so if you are interested in moving here, this is everything I wish I knew before I moved to the Phoenix area. I'm a realtor now here in the area and just know the cities well, so this is really helpful and I think it's gonna help you if you're thinking of moving to the Phoenix area. 100% free, just email me, it is on the screen. All right, so we're gonna break this down by the main things that people consider when it comes to where they should be living at. And those things are going to be your cost of living, your employment opportunities, your housing, your schools, your entertainment, and your safety. So we'll start with cost of living. I mean, this is the first thing people think about when choosing a city is how expensive is it gonna be? Am I gonna be able to afford the city I'm living in for how much I'm gonna be making? And Phoenix is over the U.S. national average for the cost of living index that I'm going by, which is what I have found to be extremely accurate. The average is 100, and Phoenix is at 108, so it's slightly above average when it comes to cost of living, and this is an average of places like San Francisco all the way to your middle of nowhere towns in Alabama, so that's kind of the average is 100, and Phoenix is just above that, and that's kind of surprising because they're a large metro city. We've seen a huge rise in home prices, so it's quite expensive here compared to what it was three years ago, but I think everywhere else is fairly similar in that scenario. It is more expensive than it used to be, and it doesn't look like there's any huge signs that we're going to be getting any cheaper anytime soon. Now, the main reason you're probably considering Phoenix is you probably want to be in a metro area. So I like to compare cost of living to other metro areas to see, well, is it a good option for you? And most I'm going to compare to anything in the western United States. What are the west major cities that you're comparing to. Maybe you really want to live in a metro city on the west half of the U.S. What are some options for you? Denver is an option. Their cost of living was 127. That's quite a bit more than Phoenix. The next option is Salt Lake City. Theirs is 122. I was quite surprised. I thought Utah would actually be a little bit cheaper than Arizona, but it wasn't, and it wasn't too close either. Uh, about 10% higher than Phoenix was when it comes to overall cost of living. Los Angeles, obviously anything in California, we're gonna dominate in terms of cost of living. There's some pros to California, such as the beach, uh, and then there's a huge list of negatives to living in California. But 176 is the cost of living for Los Angeles, which is ridiculously expensive. San Francisco, I didn't even check it because it's probably way even above that in Los Angeles. And then even Las Vegas, to my surprise, they had an 111 cost of living index. So we were actually higher than every major metro city kind of within any of the bordering states to us over here in the west half and places like Seattle and Portland were going to be much cheaper than those as well. I just didn't look into them. They're not as close to some of these other surrounding cities. So cost of living, I think if you want a metro city and you want to be able to be in a somewhat affordable place, not spend $3,000 in rent for a one bedroom place, I think Phoenix is a great option if you're looking in terms of cost of living. Now, when it comes to housing, what is the cost of housing? Is it a good price for you compared to what you're going to be making here? So obviously, the next big factor is employment opportunities. If you're going to move somewhere, it's hopefully that you're moving here to find a job. And I talk about this all the time in my housing market update videos, but Phoenix, the job market is incredible. It is rising like crazy, and it is one of the best in the country. We are seeing companies move here all the time. We had a 4% decrease in unemployment uh, year over year from December 2020. 2022 to December 2021, which is a surprise because a lot of people, their unemployment raised. We saw 93,000 new jobs in the Phoenix area. We only had one sector that lost jobs in the entire Phoenix area, and it was our informational section, and it only lost 100 jobs. We saw some really strong growth in obviously educational and health services, and also manufacturing being a big one because that's where there's some higher earners. There's a lot more jobs available when manufacturing is, and the places that have the most manufacturing jobs tend to be the strongest job markets. Not to mention we have tech companies that are coming here like crazy, TSMC being the most famous one, building a ginormous factory up in the Northern Phoenix area, just next to North Peoria. And then also Intel is doubling down and expanding their factory even bigger. So these companies are realizing 
hey, it's a lot cheaper to own and run a business in Arizona. Our taxes, our rules are a lot less restricting than a place like Silicon Valley, where are probably their competitors or their choices are where they could be locating their companies would probably be Silicon Valley. And instead they're choosing Phoenix for quite a few reasons, but uh, we won't get into those right now, but just know the job market seems fairly strong in the Phoenix area. So if cost of living is right for you, and if employment is right for you, you're then gonna look at is housing right for you? Do you like the houses available? Do you like the style of houses available? And we have a pretty broad range of what's available. I mean, we have sky rise condos in downtown Phoenix. We have your typical suburbs. We have no HOA suburbs. We have high HOA suburbs. We have luxury living in Scottsdale and North Peoria, Chandler Gilbert. And then we also have some half acre to an acre plus lots available. That is probably the one area I'd say we're lacking in terms of housing. If you're really looking for a more rural setting that wants some larger land, there's not gonna be too many options. And the ones that are an acre plus are gonna be fairly desirable and also fairly expensive. It's pretty tough to find anything over an acre under 500,000 unless you're on the far outskirts. Surprisingly, there are some huge horse properties actually fairly central in Glendale and Phoenix where you're pretty close to downtown, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and you can have this acre plus lot with horses, with a giant shop, no HOA. It's pretty crazy because right around you is suburbs, but if you really want a big lot and want to be not too close to your neighbors, those are an option. There's just not a lot of options. We have a ton of suburbs in our Phoenix area. All surrounding the area, except for basically downtown, is going to be suburbs. So if you're against suburbs, not a good spot for you, but... Because of that, we have some really amazing communities. And I think the communities are one of the biggest things that draw people to the Phoenix area, especially the 55 plus communities. So those in themselves are a huge draw. People coming to retire here or maybe just spend their winter months here. The 55 plus communities are insane here. If you don't know anything about them, you gotta look it up. They have some amazing amenities. You have some cheaper options like Sun City where you can find a place for 200,000. You have some luxury living in Trilogy at Vistancia. And so there's a pretty broad range in those communities are very well kept and they have some great amenities, rec center, all that good stuff. I don't need to get into that now. Besides 55 plus communities, there's also some all age communities that are also very appealing that people may move here just because of how nice they are. I think of a place like Vistancia, like Verado, um, like the Ganey Ranch area in Scottsdale, like the Desert Ridge area, like Chandler and like Power Ranch. All these communities, there's a long list I could draw from where they're great communities that I think people would move uh, from a place like California, purchase a beautiful home in an amazing community, and it's probably cheaper than their one in California, and in my opinion, a nicer area than the one they are in that California. So we have some amazing communities here. The median home sale for the entire Phoenix area is 439,000, and the median rent is 2,200 in the Phoenix area, which is above average compared to the rest of the US, but it's still more affordable than those surrounding major metro cities that I talked about earlier. Next thing is school. So this is obviously important for families with young kids, and I will say this is one area where we lack. We have the second lowest funded school system, but to counteract this and say that our schools aren't actually that bad, our testing scores tend to be in the average range, in the 20s and maybe low 30s, where our test scores are actually not coinciding with how much we're getting in funding, which means that our teachers and our schools are doing a really good job with the funding that they have. Now, this means that teachers are very underpaid in this area, and it also means that students in public schools probably don't have the best or maybe most up-to-date technology uh, that they could be using in the classroom. That's where I tend to see the funding is. Maybe our uh, supplies and stuff aren't as nice as some surrounding states. But there are also many great schools here in the area. In general, our public schools are lowly funded, but there are some areas like Chandler where the tech companies actually help fund the public schools. There's also some incredible charter schools, a place like Basis and Great Hearts are very highly rated and desired charter schools that are tough to get into, but uh, they are worth it. There's also some really highly rated traditional, classical, and private schools that you can look into. So there are some options where if you really wanted to put in the effort, you could find an amazing education system here in Phoenix, but in general, we tend to be middle of the pack when it comes to test scoring, and we are lower funded than almost every other state in the US. So definitely one area we lack. I say shout out for the teachers. They're not getting much money. They're underfunded. 
but they're doing a great job with what money they have. So shout out to them. They deserve our praise and they definitely deserve to be paid more. We just had the Super Bowl and the Waste Management Open in the same weekend. We have spring training right now and we also have World Baseball Classic right now. March Madness is coming next year. The Final Four in 2024 is going to be here in Phoenix. There are a ridiculous amount of events and they're not just events. They are some of the biggest events and most watch events on TV. So they are national things coming to Phoenix, bringing so much attention to the area. There's a ridiculous amount of entertainment. There are concerts constantly happening, huge names coming to arenas here in Phoenix. Taylor Swift is here this weekend, I believe. We have every pro sports team, baseball, basketball, football, hockey. We've got them all. We've got big name colleges here to watch. Uh, we have rodeos, horse shows, car shows, some sort of festival every single weekend. There is always something to do, not to mention some of the best nightlife in the entire United States in Old Town Scottsdale. We also constantly have new modern bars and restaurants opening. You're never going to run out of restaurants to try here in Phoenix. There's hikes around here. You could go up just an hour and a half north and go to Sedona, which is an awesome spot to go camping and hiking. Golfing is all around the Phoenix area. There is just so much to do in Phoenix. It's ridiculous. I really think we have some of the best entertainment in the U.S. in one city, and that's kind of well known with how many big events are coming here, and they're coming here for a reason because we're a great place to host events. So in terms of entertainment, I really think Phoenix is top-notch. If you're into the nightlife, it's a great spot. If you're into trying new restaurants, it's great. If you have a favorite sports team, they're probably going to be here a few times a year. There is just so much to do here in Phoenix, and I think it's a huge plus to be living here. Now, lastly, I want to talk about safety, and it is lastly because I really think safety just depends on where you live in the city. I think every downtown city, the closer you are to downtown, the higher crime rates they're going to be. You know, there are some downtowns that are really bad. I don't think we fall into that category. Uh, but then it also, there's some extremely safe areas in different parts of Phoenix. So it really just depends where you live. And actually, when looking at some of the surrounding metro cities, we were safer than all those ones I was mentioning earlier. Portland, Seattle, Denver, uh, Los Angeles, the only one that barely beat us was Salt Lake City. So we are fairly safe compared to the other metro cities. But there are some bad and high crime rate areas to be living in Phoenix. Those tend to not be mentioned very much on my channel because there are some really great low crime rate areas and I tend to highlight those on my channel because I only want to recommend places that I would be willing to live and I would be wanting to live in. So I'm going to probably go towards those places that have safer areas where families and individuals are wanting to move to more often. So obviously safety is a big factor and if you're thinking of moving to Phoenix, I'll definitely gladly help you out and kind of show you a crime rate map and where maybe you should and shouldn't be living and then just let you make the decision for yourself. And people do ask about traffic here in Phoenix. Obviously traffic can be bad during rush hour, you know, in the morning or in the afternoon, but that's really only if you're going towards downtown or away from downtown in those areas. And even then it's pretty rare for it to be terrible standstill traffic. Maybe on the 10 you're getting that a little bit, but just about every freeway, you're probably gonna be at least moving 25, 30 miles an hour. I would say at a minimum, I don't drive to downtown Phoenix every day, so I don't know exactly, but uh, from my experience, if it's about a 30 minute commute and you are going to downtown, maybe it adds about 15 minutes during rush hour where it'd be just 30 without that rush hour. But I've driven uh, away from downtown in the afternoon around four or five o'clock and I've never really come to a standstill, probably going at least 40 miles an hour and then, you know, 70 when it's clear and open up for the most part. So I've never found traffic to be terrible in Phoenix. I wouldn't say it's like amazing and there's never traffic, but I also wouldn't say it's LA standards where it's brutal and don't ever drive to downtown. So I kind of think it's a middle of the road. It's not a reason you should or shouldn't be moving to the Phoenix area. So hopefully this gave you a good understanding of if Phoenix is the right or wrong place for you to be moving here. Uh, if you do want help moving, I am a realtor here in the area. I've got that free move into Phoenix guide. So hopefully that can give you some more info up front. It's definitely helpful. And it's stuff I wish I knew before I moved to the Phoenix area. So just email me and I will get that over to you. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and if you think Phoenix is a good place to be living or not. Thanks so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos.